Hey guys, how's it going? So I bring to you uh, more of a side grade than an upgrade. The i9-14900 KFCP was just recently released yesterday by Intel. Now I'm not expecting any huge gains or anything. The main reason I got this is because I want to try to go for uh, over 6 gigahertz uh, overclock. So I did get this chip in today. And we're going to install my rig. And we are going to use the uh, Thermal Grizzly contact frame to help uh, with uh, thermals. And I am going to be cooling it with a 420 millimeter. AIO radiator. So I'll show that when it's installed with the thermal uh, Grizzly uh, contact frame and then we'll take things from there. So this will be a little mini review. We're just going to test some overclocks, maybe do a uh, time spy 3D mark and run a Cinebench uh, R2024 to see how it uh, compares with my i9 3900K. So again, I'm not expecting any huge gains. I mean, in gaming, I'm sure many of you already saw the YouTube reviews. It's pretty much between 1 and 3% gains. Uh, between uh, 1080p and 1440p and 4k doesn't really show any significant gains and so I'm really only doing this just so I could get some higher overclocks and see if I could at least, re at least reach uh, 60 gigahertz all core overclock so let me get this installed and I'll show you how it looks uh, with the thermal grizzly contact frame so stay tuned okay guys so I got the i9 1400k CPU installed with thermal grizzly uh, contact frame I did uh, evenly tighten those four screws just very minimally and uh, we are running an MSI Z690 Unified motherboard. So let me uh, add some uh, Thermal Grizzly uh, Extreme Cardinal Paste and then uh, we're going to install my um, Corsair H170i Elite LCD with a 420mm radiator and we'll get this installed. We'll set up an overclock and then test low temperatures and like I said a benchmark of the CP. So stay tuned. Hey guys, how's it going? So I wanted to show you my uh, CPU overclock settings, my recently acquired i9 1400K CPU. So first I'll show you the cooling. I'm running a Corsair H170i E-Delta LCD with a 420mm radiator, so lots of uh, fans keeping this radiator cool. And then for case, I'm running a Corsair uh, Obsidian 1000D Super Tower case with lots of uh, fans as you can see there. And for GP, I'm running Asus Strix RTX 4090 with dedicated uh, Seasonic 16-pin uh, power cable. And then for power supply, I'm running a 1300-watt platinum rated Seasonic uh, power supply. And the motherboard is a MSI Z690 Unify motherboard with the latest uh, BIOS update which supports Intel 14 Gen CPU. So next I'll show you the BIOS settings and show you what my 24-7 uh, 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 overclock settings are. So here we are in the BIOS. And as you can see, I'm running the i9-1400K CPU. Of the latest BIOS, uh, dated 9.7.2023. And for my 24 7 overclock settings, I have it at 5.8 gigahertz all core overclock. I had the E core set to 4.4 gigahertz. And my um, ring ratio set to 5000 megahertz. I also went into uh, the advanced CB configuration and lowered the power limit from its max. It was like, I don't know, some crazy number. I lowered the 400 watts because I kind of feel like that's what. Uh, my 420 millimeter is capable of cooling without going to crazy temperatures. And then for RAM, I'm running G-Skill DDR5 P6400 RAM, which are two 16 gigabyte sticks with nice uh, tight timings, uh, CL32 timings. And I'm running XMP mode with no overclock, just tight timings and uh, 6400 megahertz. And then for voltage, I'm running override mode. I'm not running any load line calibration or, um, what do you call it? under vaulting so i am running at 1.345 voltage which basically maxes out in, in windows 11 around 1.349 voltage so what we're going to do is we're going to run cinebench 2024 in windows and also run uh, 3d mark time spy and we'll compare with my previous chip the i9 1300k uh, cp which i had at 5.7 gigahertz all core products so only 100 megahertz bump i'm not expecting any significant changing changes uh, but we'll compare, we'll uh, show load temperatures and uh, run CPU-Z single core motor 30 tests and uh, just overall see how the GPU perform the CPU performs and as well as the GPU with uh, the CPU. So stay tuned. And in doing the CPU-Z single credit and multi thread test, I got a, a single core score of 943 and a multi score of 17,605. And again, that was at a uh, 5.8 gigahertz all core overclock with a 1.3 for 9 voltage. 
Okay, I'm currently running Cinemens 2024, and for those of you who are looking to see what the load temperatures are, my i9 1400K CPU at uh, 5.8 gigahertz total core overclock. I have it maxed out at 100 uh, degrees Celsius, oh, it looks like 101C there. And I do have my throttle TJ Max at 105, which is probably, you know, the max that you want to set it to. But those are the load temperatures overall, it usually stays just below 103C, like fully loaded. And as you can see, we are uh, running the Cinebench uh, multi-core uh, thread test. So those are the kind of temperatures you're looking to see. So 104 is pretty much pretty much where it'll max out uh, with this uh, multi-core uh, test. Hey guys, so I ran Cinebench uh, 2024. Uh, both with my 4090 and my uh, i9 1400K of CPU. For the GPU, which I had overclocked, I'll show you the overclock settings in a second, but I got 38,813. CPU multi-core score 2,366. And CPU single uh, core score of 135 points. And to compare, this is only 100 megahertz faster than my 13900KF at 5.8 or 5.7 gigahertz all core overclock, so I only gained about 2 points on the multi-core. Uh, but for the single core, I did uh, gain uh, a few more points there, so three more points on the single core. And then as for the GPU score, the highest I ever got was uh, 30,838, so I guess that's within margin uh, of my previous test. And then that was with my CPU at uh, 5.8 gigahertz all core clock. Right now it's uh, just changing speeds because it's idling, but I think you can barely see 5.8 gigahertz uh, all core clock. And then uh, for memory, I'm running G Skill Z5 DDR5 PC6 RAM, uh, 2x6, 2x sticks of uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR5. And then my GPU was overclocked to these settings. And then I also want to show you uh, the uh, MSI Afterburners thing, just so you could possibly match the settings if you want to. So 100% core voltage, power limit raised to 120%. Uh, core clock 200 megahertz and memory and this shell 1185 megahertz and then I would actually keep the fan at 100% I just have it auto just to keep the uh, noise down now uh, and so next we'll run uh, 3d mark time spy and compare all uh, the scores from my previous chipped i9 1300k CPU so stay tuned Okay guys, I ran time spy and my uh, total score is 34,743 with a graphic score of 39,213 and CP score of 21,110. And that again was with my i9 1400KF at 5.8 GHz. And then my ASUS RTX 4090 overclocked. And again I will show you the MSI afterburner settings uh, for the GPU. So t core voltage 100%, force voltage 120% uh, power limit, core clock additional 200 MHz. And memory additional 1185 MHz with the fan at 100%. And then just to compare my i9 1300K CPU, there was just a marginal gain, nothing major, but uh, this is of course my 1400KF, and this is what I got with my uh, 1300KF at 5.7 GHz all core of clock. So just a marginal difference, the uh, CPU score was 29,956, and currently I gained just, you know, a small amount, and then the graphics score went from 39,213 to 39,118 on the i9 1300KF CPU. So just a small gain. I mean, I wasn't expecting a major difference because it is only a 100 megahertz bump uh, from 5.8 gigahertz all core compared to 5.7 on my 13 gen. So just a small gain. But overall, I mean, obviously there's not a huge difference. And uh, as I said in my previous review of the chip, um, there's really no reason to upgrade if you're already on a 13 gen unless you really want to squeeze out every last bit of uh, possible for performance out of... Uh, the 14 gen uh, uh, series. And then of course, uh, I think in the new year, they're gonna have the i9 1400KS, which will have a 6.2 gigahertz uh, single core uh, turbo boost frequency. So that'll be interesting to also test out if I decide to. Overall, just uh, I'm just kind of just gonna say the same thing. It's really no real gain. I mean, you may gain a little bit in some single core performance, like we saw with uh, Cine Cinebench 2024. But overall, really, you're not going to see any much of a difference. I think all the CPU uh, reviewers like, uh, you know, Guru3D, uh, Gamers Nexus, 
Jay's two cents, they all pretty much just said the same thing. It's really just not much of a difference. I mean, I think in gaming, depending on the resolution, we're talking maybe one to three percent at 1080p and 1440p, and in 4K, there's really no uh, major significant difference. So overall, like I said, I would still give this chip a uh, three out of five because there's not really a huge uh, difference. Oh, I'm looking at my screen chat. I was wondering why I said uh, 5.7 gigahertz. Uh, I was looking at my screen chat of my previous chip. So yeah, overall, I would just say it's a three out of five. And then uh, as for temperatures, uh, load, I have mine set the throttle 100 C and I've seen it reach 100 C like when running a full uh, load test, which uh, you may have seen in this uh, video. Overall, you know, it is what it is. It's a marginal gain, nothing too uh, major, but uh, I guess it is what it is. And you also, you also definitely want to have a good cooling. I am running, a, as I mentioned, uh, Corsair H170i Elite LCD with 420 millimeter radiator. So you definitely need a lot of cooling. And I am running a large case. It's a Corsair Obsidian 1000D Supercharger case. So it's got a lot of uh, a lot of space and a lot of fans uh, front and back to keep everything uh, cooled down and everything. So that's about it. So if you did like the video, uh, do give me a like. And then if you want to see more content like this and more gaming videos, uh, feel free to subscribe. But thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support, and I'll see you guys around. Peace out.